The customization within Hogwarts Legacy is absolutely insane. And one of the most important areas which is completely customizable is the room of requirement. Not only can you make this little slice of Hogwarts your own, but it's also the place where you'll be upgrading your gear, brewing potions, growing plants, and raising your rescued beasts. There's so much that goes into the room of requirement, but in this video, we'll go over everything you need to know. The Room of Requirement is first shown to us by Professor Matilda Weasley, and the Deputy Head plays an integral role in helping us catch up with the other students as we are a late joining fifth year. Not only does she give us our trusty field guide, but she also therefore introduces us to the Room of Requirement. The Room of Requirement is our own personal space within the vast castle of Hogwarts. It's where we'll be analysing gear that we found out within the world, it's where we can then upgrade that gear, where we can brew potions, grow plants, and also where we'll be taking care of our beasts that we rescue from the world. But this place is also completely customizable. From the general aesthetic of the room to what actually occupies the space, you can spawn these conjurations which add your own personal touch to the Room of Requirement. And there seems to be a good amount of options about what you can actually conjure into this space, whether it be chairs, rugs, or wall ornaments that you can then change the color and size of to fit your personal taste. Now you may not have access to all of these conjurations right at the start of the game, but by exploring the world, completing different quests, and by visiting the Hogsmeade shop, Tomes and Scrolls, you can purchase more and more conjurations and build up your aesthetic room. But these amazing decorations are not the only reason that we have the Room of Requirement. It actually mostly serves as a functional space for your character to learn the ropes of Hogwarts as they are a late starting fifth year. Therefore, to help you not only in classes but also in battle, the Room of Requirement is kitted out with your own potion brewing station and potting table to grow your own plants. Now, whilst these stations have a customizable feature to them as well, they're mostly here from a utility point of view to help you enhance your gameplay. And along with these, we also have the loom, which is the key piece of equipment that you'll be using to upgrade your gear and manipulate it to add certain attributes that you want to tailor to your gaming experience. The loom will allow you to upgrade gear that you've found throughout the world and also assign specific attributes called traits to it to make them really personal to what you want to do and how you want to create your character's build. Now from the snippet we've seen of how the loom works, we know there's not only different levels of attributes and traits that you can assign to your gear, as well as different upgradable levels of your gear, there's also your standard rarity system of the gear itself. Some of the higher level gear you can find include the superb, extraordinary, and of course the legendary gear. Now you're unlikely to have instant access to the gear that you find without the world, as a lot of the magical properties within it are what they call unidentified. Therefore, you're going to need to make use of the very important identification station. This is one of the first items that you actually conjure within your room of requirement and is absolutely key to taking the things you find within the world and making them into something you can actually use. Now we know that new gear can be found throughout the world or by completing different quest objectives and if you're looking for more attributes and traits that you can add to that gear, they can often be found throughout the world in different bandit camps. All the different gear and traits that we've seen throughout the previews seem actually really expansive and like there's a lot to them that will help you customize your character. But you may have noticed they all require something and they are different resources. Now, some of these resources can be found throughout the world as you're just going around exploring and collecting, but to actually have a consistent access to these resources, we're gonna to need to head to our Vivarium. The Vivarium is where you house different beasts and creatures that you have rescued from throughout the world. Now we know that the world within Hogwarts Legacy is rifling with poachers, so as you go and explore the world you'll find different beast dens where you might find some timid or scared creatures that need a bit of taming and rescuing and this is where you keep them. This place is also completely customizable from different themes and conjurations which you can add to make this space nice for the beast that you've kept, but also serves an incredible utility function. By playing with the beasts, petting the beasts and also feeding them, they will share with you their magical resources. Now every beast will give you something different, whether it be mooncalf fur or puffshine fur, and this will depend on how you interact with them within your vivarium. Now at the start of the game this is a very manual process where you can interact with the beasts to pet them or feed them and make them feel comfortable. However, as the game progresses, you will actually begin to start to automate some of these features if you wish. This is in place so that you can become a little bit more efficient with your Vivarium, and giving some of the potential upgrade material requirements of late game gear, I think it will be good to get into this once it does become available. As well as gathering materials from the different beasts, you can use the Vivarium to grow and then harvest 
other resources as well, such as Moonstone, which is the magical rock which allows you to actually create the conjurations throughout the Room of Requirement. But with all the amazing things that we've seen in the Room of Requirement, are there any secrets that we don't know about yet? While scanning through the gameplay showcase footage, I noticed this area off of the main room, which we didn't really get much of a preview of, but I think might lead to a location we don't know about yet. I'm very curious what might be down these hallways. We know from the early game access footage there was a dragon egg that we collected as part of one of the main story missions. Could this be where we house it because we can't share it with our professors? Or what other secrets might one of these areas and in whole the room of requirement entail? Let's have a bit of a discussion down in the comments about what exactly you think might be hidden within the room of requirement and what other features other than what we've seen might also be there. So it's clear to see that the room of requirement is not just your own personal space to customize, even though that is a really cool feature of it, it actually serves a massive utility aspect that you're going to want to take advantage of. I think everyone's going to be spending a lot of time in the room of requirement, so let me know down in the comments what kind of theme or aesthetic you're going to be going for. I think I want to lean towards a bit of an astral space theme if that's available, but let me know yours down below. And if you're looking for some additional info on all of the different spells that are going to be within Hogwarts Legacy, or want a bit of a guide on the combat system, check one of these videos on screen now.